of Yeshua, who we call Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. I thank the Lord for giving us the opportunity to be able to go back into his word. And the last message that I gave, it was talking about specifically that would James, would James be accepted in modern Christianity? Would he embrace what we what we put out as modern Christianity? Because I don't believe it would. Yes, I'm looking for something, and I know that doesn't look good, but I did it anyway. And so what I'm going to do is share my screen so that you can see what I'm looking at. And then we need to get into this because our topic for today is, does the modern church hate God and God's spirit? I mean, hate God and love God slash spirits that grant wealth. What that means is, do they hate God and they love God? I should have put that in a little G that grants wealth. And so now I'm going to share my screen where you can see what I'm looking at. Here is screen share. Here it is. That screen share. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Can you see me? No. Okay. I think you'll be able to see me now. Can you see me now? Yes. Beautiful. We're going back. We're going back in the book of James, and we got about five to seven scriptures to look at. I did not want to teach this passage like this. I did not desire to teach this passage like this. It's so rich with things that have happened all over the world. It's so rich with things that we and our ancestors have experienced, people in Guatemala, people all over the world. And yet, with all that staring me in the face, I want you all to see how the Lord leads me in such a way that I believe it was of him. So I'm not going to fight it. So we come off of James chapter four. Let's take maybe one minute, 30 seconds maximum to deal with what we see there so we can move into chapter five. Now he tells them, don't go trying to get business off just your strength. In other words, you say we gonna go somewhere. We are gonna go and buy. We are gonna get. We gonna we gonna get gain, and we are gonna stay there a year and do it. They say buy and sell and get gain. And James said, "You don't know what your life is. It's like a vapor. It appears for a little time and disappears, and vanishes away." He said, "We ought to say, if the Lord will, we'll live and do such and such." If Yah wills, we will live. If he permits, he said, anything after that, and you rejoice in your boasting, all such rejoicing is evil. That is saying that all the stuff you're talking about, adulterers and adulteresses and all of the things that cause people to fight and war against each other, it can culminate to a people that are so desirous and greedy for gain, they don't care how they treat their brother. Tim, where do you get that from? Look at five, five and one. Remember when this was written, it wasn't divided in chapter and verse. He says, go to now. Come now. I want you to look. Go to now. Because he used that same thing, see, when he told the people about the rich. Go to now in 4 and 13. You just, today to say something. So I want you to pay attention. That was a term that they used. So come now, you rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall, future tense, come upon you. Your riches are corrupted. Your riches, when he say your riches are corrupted, that means you got a bad kind of rich. Your rich is not the kind that is blessed. Your riches have become rotten. Your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold is cankered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasure 
for the last days. You have prepared yourself like what they would call a patriot, like they call a survivor, like they call a person ready for nuclear war. You got maybe a bunk in the ground, but if they didn't have bunkers in the ground, but you have eat treasure. Remember the rich man in, in the parable in Luke 16? Uh, tear down this barn right here. Yeah, I'm going to speak it into existence. I'm going to speak it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to tear that little sap sucker. And that's a bird. Oh, my dad used to say it. I thought it was cussing. I'm going to tear that little sap sucker down and I'm going to build me a big one and I'm going to store all of my goods and then I'm going to sit back, relax, and I'm going to say, so take your knees, eat, drink, and be merry. Slaughter you some animals bust open some wines let them i mean some some grapes let them burst them open make wine and dance eat drink and be merry and the scripture says out of the mouth of our lord and god said to him thou fool tonight your soul is required and whose things will those be? And the Messiah said, so is he that is rich in this world and not in faith. Here he's talking about people. He said, go to now rich, rich men's house for your mistress that shall in the future. See that right there? It will tell you in my thing right here, it says that code verb Present, either middle, a passage, plural, adjective, because the, the verb is what we're looking at. You're looking at the verb and the verb. I, I should have hit the verb because when you hit the verb, then it lets you know what's going on here. So your riches are corrupted. It's speaking in the tense of being present, but it's actually future. Maybe Gary can explain it if it need to be done for somebody. But a lot of times the Bible will speak like that, like you are dead and yet you live. And it says, your gold is cankered, it says, and the rust of them shall be witness against you. It shall eat your flesh as if it were fire, for you have heaped treasure today for the last days. You prepared yourself for the last days, but you haven't prepared yourself for your soul. He says, behold, here we go. The higher or the wages or the wage that missed those, the Greek word, the wage of the laborers which have reaped down your fields. You have enough land that you have fields, not just one. And you have gotten people out there to do the work. They've done the work for you that you didn't have to do. They reap down your harvest, which is so big, which you kept back by fraud. You kept back. You kept back their pay. You determined that they would work for you uncompensated. He's talking to people that's supposed to be loving the most high God, which is so bad about this. These are to the people that are scattered abroad before they have that last big scattering in 70 AD. So they were scattered by the Assyrians and the Babylonians. He says, behold, the hire of the laborers, which you, which you reap back your, which is reap down your fields, which is kept back by, by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them that have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. They have entered into the Lord of the armies of his host. In the same way when Israel cried and the Most High made Moses come up down the mountain by putting on the show, why that bush not burn up? Well, some of them check that out. This ain't right right here. This, this ain't normal. This ain't working the way it normally was. And he came up there and he saw. And the Most High said, first of all, you, you thinking you're coming up here to inquire of me. No, I'm up, I'm up here getting ready to give you some information. Take your shoes off your feet. First of all, you can't even stand here much longer like that. I'll kill you. This ground is set apart right now. It's holy. Moses hid his face. And those that know the rest of it, the Most High God says, I've heard the cries of my people. 
and I come down to see about it. And I'm going to execute my judgment on Egypt. This is what this passage is saying. This passage is saying those that are wealthy, those that have oppressed, those that have built wealth. He said to those people, don't be like those. Israel, why in the world are you acting like the Assyrian, Assyrians? Israel, why are you acting like those that are in Babylon? Israel, why are you acting like the surrounding nations that don't know me? I've given you my instruction for peace. I've given you my instruction for judgment. I've given you my instruction to give you wealth, wealth that you didn't have to go out and do all of this to get it. I'm the one that promised you in Leviticus 26 that I will make your harvest grow. I'm the one that promised you that your treading would, would, would come back to the time it's time to plant again and your planting would go to the time of picking that, getting the grapes and that you would have to find somewhere to put your old soil. I said that, but I told you not to follow other nations, other gods, in other words, the custom of the people. So James is saying the cries of them that you have oppressed has entered into the Lord of Sabi ears of the Lord of Sabia. You have lived in pleasure on earth and have been wont on self-indulgent. You have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. In other words, you have been able to go out and nourish yourself like you have slaughtered your, slaughtered your animals and just sat down and eat and left them with nothing. Just like a man, another in the same parable, he he wanted to just eat the crumb that fell off his table like the dogs. Now remember, the Messiah is giving this passage or giving that parable to his people. Remember, he taught them in parables because hearing they would not hear. You have condemned and killed the just, and he does not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren. Until the coming of the Lord. Be not deceived, brethren. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Whatever a nation sow, he speak, he speak it to the nation. Twelve tribes of Israel. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patient for it until he received the early and the latter rain. Be ye therefore patient, or be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Oh, I know it might seem hard. I know it might seem like you're going to have less. Be patient, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Because we have such a few little scriptures right here, let's read it in ESV, and let's move quicker, because I want you to see how the word oppression is in here, okay? Come now, you weep. You rich, I'm in ESV. Weep and howl, for your miseries are coming upon you. They are coming. Judgment is coming. I would submit that let's focus in on those of us that are in the position to hire people. Those of us in the position that we owe somebody something and we don't give it. Those of us that's in the position, we know somebody's poor and we take it the advantage of them because we can. He says, your riches have rotten, your garments are moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded. I submit to you, this is from the vantage point of the Most High God. Because of the fact we have done what is outside of his will, that which we think is a blessing, it look, look at what he is describing it as. Their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. In other words, you're going to feel this. You ever burnt yourself? You ever touched something hot and didn't know it? You ever laid your naked arm up? You gonna lean up against the car and you lay and in the, in the summertime and you and, and you burn it? Have you ever stuck your hand in something that was red hot? Have you ever touched fire and didn't know it was there? You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold the wages of the laborers who have mowed your fields, which you have kept back by fraud. I, I submit you, I submit to you. Many countries were founded that way. Even this one. How dare we to take on the nature and the characteristic of the oppressor? 
the modern church, I submit you, the modern church does hate God because Matthew 6, 24 says you cannot serve God and mammon, the gods of wealth, the gods of money. Either you will love the one and hate the other, or you will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. I'm going to show you that we hold to one in many cases. They are crying out against you, and the cries of the harvesters have reached to the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and self-indulgence, and you have fattened your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You have, you have condemned and murdered the righteous person, and he does not resist you. How in the world, Uncle Tim, that's what, that's what some of my niece and nephew call me, Uncle Tim. How in the world, Uncle Tim, does that work? Well, let's look at what the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. The Bible says, he that has pity upon the Lord, he that have pity upon the poor. You think it's just the poor. He that has pity upon the poor lendeth to Yahweh. You see, Yahweh, he lendeth to Yahweh. And that which he has given, he will pay him again. How much more when this person has been a day laborer and you kept back that which was supposed to be his? Listen to what he says in Proverbs 11, 24. You want to be a riches. We want to be a riches. Churches want to be a riches in the way that the nations do. But look at what he says. He says, there is that which scattereth and yet increases. And there is that which withholdeth more than is meat, than is necessary, and it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that withholdeth corn or grain, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. Let's look at this. There is that one that scatters. The context of this is he that distributes, distributes and do well to people when they're in need, when they're down low. Yah since you're lending to Yah, he's going to repay. So it doesn't make sense. In this passage, you got these people that are supposed to know Yah. These are the things that they should have already known. By the time you get to James or Jacobus, who we call James, by the time we get to the apostles, these, these, these things are like a thousand years old that they should have already known. Some of them are over 2,000 because some of them are going to be repeated in the Oldest Testament. And they determine to withhold. And it lends to poverty because when your gold and your silver and your wealth is cursed by God, pitcher, moth eaten, corrupted, etc. And it says the liberal soul shall be made fat. Notice this. When you look at Proverbs 28, 27, he that giveth to the poor shall not lack. But he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. I don't know how many years ago that was, but I, I credited it to my wife that I was telling her, I hate going into the store every time. I, said, I can see them when I pull up, here they come. I can see them looking at me like, like when you watch the animal pictures, you know, and the the little deer going across there and the cat kind of hunched back and he start bending down low and, and you see him start scooting toward whatever animal it is. And you can see them. And so I would walk in the store and I would not look at them. Now, if they got my attention and asked me for something and I say, what you need? They say, I'm hungry. I said, let's go in there and get you something to eat. Okay. And if they say, no, I said, well, you lied to me. And I probably would still give them something anyway, but 
I still wouldn't just, I still made sure that I just kept walking. And one day, Andrina said to Tim, the Bible said you ain't supposed to hide your eyes from the poor. <laughs> it was just like, okay, here, this is called your solar plexus. It's right there where your sternum is and top of your stomach. It was just like she took a stick or something, like a baseball bat and held it in and hit me right up. Oh! Because I, not that I wouldn't give, but I knew I was hiding my eye. That's what's called the evil eye in the Bible, really. It's the stingy eye. Because I don't like being taken advantage of. I don't like somebody running game on me. And from that time on, the Lord smote my heart. And so a lot of times somebody come up or sometimes I'll just look. They don't say anything, and I see they look like they have a need. And if if they don't have a need that I know about, but they look like, I said, "Were you trying? Were you trying to get something? Were you? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to get some dollars to get something to eat, and I'll give them some money. Sometimes they say I'm just hungry. Whatever you gonna give me? If I have time, if I'm on the way home, if I'm not, if I. Uh, I go in there and say, what you want? Can I get a hot dog? Get two. Can I get some chips too? Yep. You want to get a drink? Get you a drink. Give it to them. And sometimes I might still give them some money. Listen to me. I have never suffered because of that. I might look in my pocket one day and didn't have any, you know, any cash left, but I had my credit card. I have never suffered. Never. I did some work the other day for somebody and got an extra $25 that I didn't that, that I didn't even charge the person. That happens. And what I'm saying is I have never suffered because of that. This was part of their heritage. This was part of what the children of Israel were supposed to do. They were supposed to be able to be generous to one another. And so they had learned other things, how to treat people, how to uh, to be evil to the person. And so I want to show you something else I want to pull up. And this one that I want to pull up is the Bible tell you, well, I'm not even going to go to that right now. I'm just going to tell it to you because I don't want to hold you long. The Bible talk about you are not the key the goods of a hireling overnight. A hireling was a day labor. So if you keep the good, the, the goods or whatever you owe the day labor, and he cried to God, the Lord will fight for him. The Bible teaches not only do you not pay the day labor when it's day, if that's what he's expecting, because we've had other people to change it. You wait a month to get paid. You get paid every quarter. Wait till the end of the week. And yet, some of us get our money right away. Now, I can understand sometimes a person may get their check once a month, but like I used to tell my sons, if you work for me and the person stiff me and don't pay me, that's really not your responsibility. You working for me. So I taught my sons. I, I never wanted my sons to think I play with their money. I tell my sons, if I told you I'm going to pay you something and I forget, I say, I, I say, I can forget. And I don't pay you before you call me a liar. I said, what you do is tell me that you said you were going to do so-and-so and you didn't and you didn't pay me. I said, see how I act. If I say something like that old money, that, that, that little bit way back. I said, if I start making excuses, then you call me a liar. Because of the fact, if I promised it to them and they do the work, I believe that that's their money. So I'm bringing that out. Let's go back to what we were working with because I, I want us to go back to our text so we don't forget our text. I, I can tell it to you. You hold back that which belongs to others. You're stingy with those that have earned the wage. And James is really saying that there's a curse on you. I don't know if people really catch that or not, but I want to make sure you see it. There's a curse on that person that does that because he's holding back. They reaped and they cried to the Lord of Sabaoth 
And this is what he said. There's going to be a day of, you did it like you did the day of slaughter. But this is what I want you to see that modern churches do. Modern churches teach us how to oppress the poor. Modern churches teach us how to hold back. And I want to tell you how they do it. I want you to walk with me slowly. One of the ways that they do it, instead of you being a blessing to somebody that you know that need a blessing, they say, come fill up our house. Come and fill up the pastor's coffers. And you've never really seen the pastor do anything for anybody. You never really seen the assembly, even when there's people in the in the church might just need thirty dollars, fifty dollars to pay for some medicine that that the drug administration have gotten them addicted to. And I don't mean addicted to like going crazy. I'm talking about do you hear the commercials? Uh, see your doctor before you get off this medication because it alters many things that's inside of you that if you quit taking it, you can have an effect. Sometimes some medicine may not even do that, but they need it. Sometimes a person just might need just a little bit of something so that they're not on the street. Now, God never told you to take care of everybody's bill, but I want you to look at what he says here. Let's go to Malachi. This is what people love. Oh, they love Malachi. They love Malachi. But I want you to see verse 9, and I want you to see how it really works. 8 and 9. Will a man rob God? You've heard this before. Yet you have robbed me. But you say, when have you robbed me? He says, in tithes and offerings. If you rob God in tithes and offerings, he said, you are cursed with the curse. You have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring y'all the tithes in my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And he said, prove me now here with saith the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough for you to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer. In other words, I will rebuke anything that's coming up to destroy. Like, for instance, what would be a devourer? Is it a monster? In the book of Joel, it was a canker worm, a real worm, okay? A canker worm. He says, for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Still sound like the canker worm or a locust on it. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, save Yahweh of hosts. And look, all the nations, all of the nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Oh, but you, you've you been stout against me, say, uh, saith Yahweh. What have we spoken so against thee? You say it's vain to serve Yah. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance? Let's look at what he says. If you go back to Malachi 3 and 1, we're going to see how this fits with James. Because James was very, very biblically astute. Now look. In James 3 and 1, he says, I'm going to send my messenger. I'm going to send my malak, and you shall, he shall prepare the way for me. That's John the Baptist, the, the Messiah said he was. And that's what I uh, was told by Gabriel to Zechariah in Luke chapter 1. It says, he shall prepare the way before me. Me. They're talking about Yahweh's talking. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant. Yahweh the word is going to come and be the messenger of the covenant. I've taught that before. Behold, he shall come, say of Yahweh of hosts. That's the saying, the Lord of Sebi. I've James used that term. What do you mean, Lord of hosts? See the word here? Saba. That's where we get the word. Uh -uh. How'd you lose that? I hope you all can still see it. Can you still see it? Somebody say yes if you can. And it says, and who shall, who shall stand when he appeareth? He is like a refiner's fire and like full of soap. In other words, he knows how to cleanse out the dirt, cleanse out the mess. Now, let him tell you how to cleanse out the mess. He's going to identify the mess. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. Then, then, 
it says that they may offer unto Yahweh an offering in righteousness, another word for justice, and the offering of Judah and Jerusalem shall be pleasant unto Yahweh, as in the days of the former years. Notice, and I will come near to you in judgment. If you do these things, he said, I will come to you in judgment. Uh, I just saw Andrina come back in. Had, did I cut you out of the video or did they just do it on, on its own? I guess she'll answer me in a minute. And it says, as in the days of old, as in the former years, and I will come to you in judgment. Remember James, it said in chapter four, draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And he tells you how to get rid of that double mind. Well, listen, he says, if you do it, I say, I'll come near to you in judgment and I will be a swift wit witness against the sorcerers, those that divine. I'm going to come against those that deserve death because that's the death penalty. And against, I'm wondering if my, my computer keep making noise. I'm wondering if I'm losing you all. Am I losing you all? Somebody tell me something, yes or no. Else I'm just recording by myself and I'll just keep doing it. Oh, here. Okay, was I losing you all? No, I, I had plugged oh. in another speaker and I was talking, but it won't let you hear me, so. Okay, I'm I'm fine. I just don't want you all to be out because this is this is something in a way I've never taught it, but it's still righteous. Okay, no, you you you're good. Okay, so in verse five, I will come near to you in judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers. That means I'm going to come and execute the judgment that the oppressors need to have. The sorcerers, that divine, that was a death penalty. The adulterers that had a, a man that had sex with another man's wife or somebody that was to betrothed to him, I'm getting rid of him, putting him to death. And the false swearers, whatever it is that they do to oppress you in false judgment, I'm going to do that to them. And then he says, and those that oppress the hireling. This is what James is talking about. I'm going to deal with those that oppress the hireling and his wages. I'm not stretching this. I'm telling the butt naked, unadulterated truth. The widow that was supposed to be looked after with the tithes. In the third year. And the fatherless. And the tenth, they were supposed to leave a border around their fields for the poor. They were not to ever take and gather up everything that God let grow. That's why he said, when you lend to the poor, you lend to the you lend to the Lord. When you lend to the poor, you lend to the Lord. That's mine. That's mine. And I say, I give that to the poor. You got people saying, Will a man rob God because you didn't give the money to the church? Now, he is talking about the widow. He's talking about the hireling in his ways. He's talking about the fatherless. Look, I come in swift judges against the false swearers, against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me. Saith the Lord of hosts. Yahweh says, for I am Yahweh the Lord. I change not. How did he change when he came to the modern day church? Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me or draw nigh unto me and I will return unto you or I'll draw nigh to you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you say, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offering? He has not said one thing. He has not said one thing about everything that you have goes to a pastor or to a building. He's talking about people. Well, I, I didn't make it up. But let's look at some of what he says. Here's a distinction drawn between the annual tithe. They would tithe. They would tithe. And what we're looking at is the people that have fattened themselves up as in the day of slaughter, those that have oppressed and high, kept back wages. I submit to you if you kept back wages, but you also kept back that which you should have been doing for somebody when it was necessary to have it done. You've stolen, you defrauded them. And we better start thinking about some of this stuff. 
James even said it earlier. James said in chapter two, if your brother or sister be hungry and you tell them hungry or, or, or need some clothing, you say, uh, be warmed and be filled. And you don't give them what they need. You say, your faith is dead. So looking at Deuteronomy chapter 14, you remember that Deuteronomy chapter 14. If I'm not mistaken, somebody asked me about that. It might've been brother Charles or another guy I was talking to. Look at what it says. 14.22 Deuteronomy. Thou shalt surely tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat, look, the tithe, it wasn't money, and thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God, or Yahweh your God, in the place which he chose the place uh, to place his name there. And the tithe of the corn, which is grain, and the wine, and the oil. Yes, they drank wine. And they, if you're going to tell me they didn't drink wine, tell me they didn't, corn, they didn't eat corn, okay? It says the, the corn, the wine, and thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds, and of the flock, that they may thou mayest learn to fear Yahweh your God always. Now, if the way be too long for you to go, the place where he records his name, so that you're not able to carry it. Or if the place be too far from thee, which your Lord should choose to set his name there. When Yahweh have blessed you and blessed thee, then you shall turn it into money, bind it up for money in thine hand, and go to the place which Yahweh your God should choose, and you shall bestow that money for whatsoever your soul lusted after. Whatever you desire, whatever you want to eat. Look, for oxen, for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, strong drink, drink the word hashakar, fermented drink that they made out of the, out of the grain. That's what we call beer. Do you say, well, you ain't gonna get drunk? You, really? You got Moses there, you got Aaron there, you got the Levites there, and if you haven't read the book of Numbers, they got a group of people that were designed that you go just touch the tabernacle, you defile, you, you defile it, they put you to death. You go out there and you start beating people, they have they had justice. You think in modern versus what the word of God had set up. Strong drink of whatsoever your soul desireth, and you shall eat there before Yahweh your God, and you shall rejoice in thou and thy household. And look, and the Levite, we don't leave out the Levite. But it wasn't only that the Levite got what was coming from the blessing of the earth from the from the most high God. And the Levite that is within your gates. Thou shalt not forsake him, for he have no parts, no inheritance with thee. If you haven't read the book of uh, Exodus and don't know it, don't understand it, or the book of Numbers, everybody got a portion of land, and you will see that portion of land that they got when you go through and read the book of Joshua. The Levites did not get a portion of land. Like, this is Judah, this is Benjamin, this is Simeon, this is Gad, this is Asher, this is Manasseh. No, and Ephraim at the top. You don't get, you don't get that. Each one of those places that had an inheritance were to make special room for the Levites and they would teach the people. Because Yah said, I'm your inheritance. That's why when you start seeing things coming from the tithe, that was their support. All right, I just want you to see that. The Levites that is within your gates, thou shalt not forsake him. If you forsake him, you rob them. And if you rob him, you rob God. I'm saying, how, how do you say that to him? It's because of the fact he said, I'm your inheritance. And since this part of the tithe that you give it on a regular, whenever you have your harvest is mine. And I said to you to do it, just like when I say put the murderer to death, I don't go out there and do, I tell you to do, you do what I say. I say help the poor because that I'm taking care of the poor. You do what I tell you to do. And then some people have the nerve to say, God have no hands but ours and God can't get, no, it's not that way partner. You won't do it. He can do it. But you're going to be held responsible for what you didn't do. Jeremiah said one time, I'm not going to speak in his name anymore. And uh, it got a little hot on him. He said it was like fire shut up in my bones and he couldn't forbear. Verse 27, and the Levites with this in, within your gates, your gates of your inheritance, I didn't, I didn't give them plots of land. Thou shalt not forsake him, for he have no part, no inheritance with thee. And at the end, listen to listen to the words. At the end, this is what is called the triennial or the three-year tithe. 
At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of your increase the same year. You shall lay it up within your gates. That means you don't eat it. And the Levites, because he have no parts, no inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widows, the stranger, the fatherless and the widow, the stranger, the father and the widow, this day, the pastor, the bishop, the apostle, the greedy greeter, and the and the pimp daddy squeeze. No, it says the stranger, the father, and the widow, which are within your gates, shall come and shall eat and be satisfied. Will you show us where you're reading, please? I'm I'm right here. Can you can can you see my screen? I don't see where you're reading. But can you see my screen? Is I see that... your screen. Okay, it... on the left hand corner. It should be the 29th verse. Can you see the 29th verse on the it says the eleventh verse? Okay, so something has happened. Uh, oh, it says screen is paused. I didn't tell I didn't tell it to do that. And so so if you I'm glad you said something. Because it's like it's looking good on my end. Can you see now? It's still saying the eleventh. So, uh, okay, then I'll stop the screen. I'll stop the sharing, and then I'll come back and do a new share. I didn't really want to interrupt you, but I, 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 I I'm glad that you did because okay. if you can't, well, maybe the recording would be able to see it, but I need I need you to be able to see it as well. Okay, can you see my screen now? No, it's still it's, saying Paul. It's still says eleven. It's okay. Give me give me a second. I don't I don't know why it's acting ugly. I had a I had another thing that, that happened tonight. That's what when I was setting up my class, I was like, what's going on? So let me just new share. Let me try that. Can you see it now? I did a new share. No. No, I, you, you but you you can pick up back up where you're trading the thought. Yeah, but, I, I, but I I do have my physical Bible here. I just I yeah, was but just I, but I, it's it's not doing good. I mean I can take I could take another 15 seconds. There we are. 29 okay. and the Levites. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, I know how I did it now. When I my I have a little late, what you call it, a pop-up, and I have to move that sometime to see it. And I think I must have went from the pop-up where it says Paul share. All right, let's okay. go back to where I at 29. Can you see 29 on my left hand side now? Yes. Thank you. Please do that every time. Okay. Yes, it, sir. It said, or somebody, verse 29, it says, and the Levites, because he has no part, no inheritance with thee, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, which are within your gates, shall come, and they shall eat and be satisfied, that Yahweh, your God, may bless thee in all the work of your hand, which you do us. And so we rob God when we start telling people all the tithe that they ever give got to go to the pastor or that building and we're not we won't do anything for anybody else even the levites had to pay a tithe out of what they got because they were supposed to participate in that and if you have to just go to your assembly and that's the only way you can be a blessing to somebody you're not as good a man as boaz was you're not as good a man as james said you should be in james chapter two when somebody's hungry and you won't give them anything it would have been something if he'd have told you to go and go and take them home and 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 keep them in your house because a lot of times they would take them home and feed them. And I'm telling you now, uh, if I if I if I feel it's safe, you know, you could come to my house and we can go buy to a restaurant. You know, because the Bible has taught us wisdom. And somebody say, well, you don't say that in the scripture. Well, you haven't read all the scriptures, so you need to be quiet when you talk to me like that. So that is what I wanted to bring up. But I want to show you how the modern day church have really blown it, have really came to the place that they robbed God most high. They keep back the wages because they want wealth. And I'm, and I'm going to submit to you that very thing that we want, the most high God has taken from us. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 57, and let's go to verse 1. Isaiah 57, verse 1. The Bible says, through the prophet, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. Isaiah, do it loudly. Don't whisper it. 
He says, in the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet they seek me early. They try to draw nigh to me and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteous. Notice, they come to me on the pretense. Like when we talk about a church, when we talk about people that they love to sing, love to sing every service, love to sing the pastors, love to, and they, they love to do a little walking. Dun, 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 dun. They love to sing. They love to do things as if they were righteous. Look, they seek me daily. Wait, wait a minute. They show them their transgressions. In the house of Jacob, their sins, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. We do wrong and we still want to worship. That's what Saul wanted to do when he was rejected. Well, just go with me, please. Just go with me, please, Samuel, before the people. Or in the book of Amos, we want to keep singing the songs, but we don't want to do justice. He says, they ask me of the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching God. Like they told Ezekiel, come sing one of those others. Speak again, man. It's like a lovely song when you talk, but they don't obey. He says, they take delight in approaching God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and you don't see it? Wherefore have we afflicted our souls? And you take it no knowledge. You want to know what fasting is? Afflicting your soul. As if you were already mourning or if something had already happened, you forced yourself in the state of afflicting your soul, okay? Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. You exact all your labors. Now, this is what I, re I really want you to see this. I'm going to pull this over here to ESV. Now, notice when I pull it from the ESV, it's got a word in here that made me do it. Because I, when I was going through it, I said, oh, this needs to be shown, be shown. So in verse three, why have we fasted and you see it not? We have humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it. But in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Isn't that what James was complaining about? Isn't that what James was talking about? You oppress your workers, and by extension, when you don't do for those that I've already set aside a certain amount of what you have to be a blessing, especially to your people, especially to the people of God and the widows and the orphans, you are oppressed by defrauding them. And in the case of your workers, you still make them work. I, I, I would go there. I would go there. But I, we know our nation was built like that. But notice, and they were Christians and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with the wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice heard on high. You can come up here and, and you think James gonna embrace your church because you sing or because you call a fast, a 21 day fast, and you don't do the will of God. You're crying out for justice and you're not just yourself. And you think that's going to make Yah here? Remember, he said you ask and you, you get not because you ask amiss, you ask wrongly to consume it upon your lust. He says, is such a fast that I chose? Now notice, he's going to tell you what kind he chose. A day for a person to humble himself is to bow down his head like a reed. King James will say bulrush. To spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Will you call this a fast? And a day acceptable to Yahweh is not the fast that I chose to loose the bonds of wickedness and to undo straps of the yoke and to let the oppressed go free. But as long as you love mammon, as long as you love the God of money, as long as you are more interested in building yourself up something so that you can save it against the last days, so that you can say to your soul, soul, take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. As long as you're trying to make yourself set up high as if you're going to live forever and not realize your life is just a vapor, 
you're not going to lose the bonds of wickedness. You're not going to undo the straps of the yoke or let the oppressed go free or break every yoke. He says, is it not to share your bread with the hungry? I wouldn't be surprised if there are people right now that have never shared their bread or any of what they had with somebody that they didn't know and like already. And the Messiah taught against that. He said, oh, you can call your friends to go out and eat. Or you can call your friends to eat. Just go get lunch. But somebody that you don't know, you don't care about. I can't even give you, I can't even give you five on it. It can't give you three on it, two. What you gonna do with it? So what if he's gonna get a beer? And it's gonna make him feel better, calm his nerves. You might go get you some chewing gum and smoke you a cigarette, calm your nerves. But anyway, to share your bread with the hungry. And to bring the homeless or the poor to your house. When you see the naked, cover him. And hide not yourself from your own flesh. Then, then shall your light break forth like dawn. And your healing shall spring up speedily. Look at what we keep ourselves from. Because we have served the God of money, mammon. Because we're interested in the prosperity message. Well, you know, if I don't have nothing, I can't give them. When you got something, then what do you give? It says, your healing shall spring speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. And the glory of Yahweh shall be your rear guard. <laughs> got him. Do you understand? Yah used to have a rear guard for the people. He would have to kill it. The, the pillar of cloud would go before them. And then when somebody would come up behind it, be behind them in the rear guard, it would be your rear guard. I, I remember when I first started reading the Bible when I was about 17 in real hard earnest, King James was a your re, your re reward sometime. But it says, then shall you call on Yahweh and he will answer. We want these prayers answered. He's going to talk in the fifth chapter back in prayers answered. Then shall you call and Yahweh will answer. You will cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst and pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, slandering, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom as the noonday. We don't have to travel around the world to do this. One day, one night, I was working downtown Atlanta, and I saw stuff I hadn't seen before, because it wasn't always like that in downtown Atlanta. Then shall your light rise as the darkness, and your gloom shall be as the noonday, and Yahweh will guide you continually. What kind of promise is that? You people are being led to the Lord, they say, I will guide you. You want to have a cloudy pillar, I will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of waters whose waters do not fail and your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. Somebody say we ain't got no ancient ruins. Really? There's some stuff that Yah had already promised his children back in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And it wasn't just for them, it was for their children and their children's children. And a lot of those things have been taken from us. Our heritage has been gone. And those things can be rebuilt. We don't look and care. So when I went, it was I was looking in James. And I said, let me. And I was working through, God knows I was. And I was just seeing the rich men five and one he said weep and mourn you got to weep and howl for your miseries that will come your riches you got them i don't value them i don't see them as great they're corrupted moth eaten your gold and silver is cankered the rust of them shall be witnessed against you how some of that you have you shouldn't be having anymore kept back wages paid people too cheaply you know what you do. We know what we do. And the modern church is not exempt. Look, he's talking to Israelites right here. 
So you keep the treasure together as for the last days. That's what you, if I don't save the, everything, I won't have anything. He didn't tell you not to save. In Proverbs, he talked about saving. Or either Proverbs or Ecclesiastes, well, he said do it among seven. In other words, divide it. Behold, the hire of the laborers which have reaped down your fields. Anytime you're keeping back people's money like that and you know they're desperate for it, they can cry out. I, I was going to pull up the scripture on the hireling and uh, I don't remember where it is. Andrina can look it up for me. It, it was in one of my notes, but I wanted, I was going to lose my flow making my mind remember where it was. I think it's in Deuteronomy. It's in both of them. But anyway, you kept back by fraud. It They cry. And the cries of them which have reaped, which have done your labor, which have done your work, which have cut your grass, which have moved rocks out of your yard, which have carried off and hauled your stuff, which have washed your car, which have kept your, whatever it is. Sometimes business people in the church don't even want to pay the members, right? But anyway, the cries of them that have reaped have entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth, of armies. You lived in pleasure, been wanton and nourish your hearts as in the day of slaughter. This is what was done to our ancestors. Many times they would have a great big slaughter and eat many, many, many meals. I've read about it. And they might let the let the the slaves let them have the inside that their intestines full of defecation or the nasty feet. While they ate many meals and drank and wore all kind of fancy things. Yeah, I was looking. And if you can see some wrong that was in that right there, what about some of the things we do? If you've never given to the poor, if you've ever turned your eyes and not try to be a blessing to somebody, when you knew it was safe to do so, it seemed safe to do so, then remember you missed an opportunity to lend to the Lord. He gave you an opportunity to sow, to sow some blessing or sow a seed, as they call it. You think all you're sowing seed is cash out, push pay, Venmo, all of these things to a church. And sometimes the message wasn't even that great. Well, I'm not going to denigrate people that give to a church and the church does something for the community. But a lot of times, the only time people will give to a church is that they can write it off on their taxes. The only way. I can't write it off. You get nothing. Because it'll hurt me. God's watching. So I submit to you. That we realize. That the most high God knows. The modern church is different. Jesus said you can't. You can't hold to one. Without despising the other. Do you hold on to I got to protect myself and I can't give away anything? I got to build my wealth. I can't do that right now. When I get wealthy enough, it don't matter. Then I can do it. You're holding to one. You're despising the other. You're loving one as you adore and that you honor and you elevate. You're honoring one. The love for the Most High God will cost you in time, life, and your income but often he's using us to water nurture and fertilize the, uh, the lives of others that he's not down here doing with his own hands and when i say hands i know he doesn't have hands like we say but he can if he wants to he's appeared as men before hand is the is one of the symbol of the hebrew letter yod it means power with that i'm want to say i hope i provoke some of us to Look at how we treat the poor. Look at how we treat the poor that are really poor. I didn't say not be kind to some of those that are on drugs. They still stay in that situation. I didn't say don't be kind to those that you th think they're scamming and you don't know. But those that you really do know. Those that you really do know. I'll end with this. I used to go to a church. When I was younger, and once a year we would have a convocation, it would be in August, and I lived in the city where it was, and 
I, I was in sales. I, I was dealing, working at a cemetery and I would sell the property pre-need so that people didn't have to wait to the last minute to buy their, their, you know, buy and get their arrangements and I could do that and get a discount, et cetera. So I ended up going to one of the sister's house. She was an old sister. And, uh, she would sit in a certain place in the right hand side. I can see that place. Her and another sister that kind of looked like they were old. They wore their hats and went to her house and I saw a big hole in her floor. I didn't know how to how to fix it at that time. And I went and told some people that had a you know authority and power. I said, Can we get some men together and fix it? See, I knew that we could fix it because I had worked help building churches. Um, in South Carolina, two or three places in South Carolina and different places, we get together and we build churches like or build additions from the ground up from the time you have it scraped off and put down crush run and put the plastic over it for the we've done that. And I would watch her have to pay because I think she had a wheelchair. She had to pay somebody at the time of $15 a week to bring her back and forth to church. And it, it vexed my soul. So a lot of times they would come by and they were going to do special things for special people. I wouldn't, I wouldn't participate. And the thing is that how many other people, I had seen people like that before. In the Most High God, and I got another brother on the line with me Sometimes we'll be working the most time. We'll just prick our heart. This person can't afford to pay me. If I tell my wife to such and such, I, I did this. I, I, I don't see that this person can afford to pay me. And it's like, so? You, you did it anyway. It's no big deal. I She don't say it like this, but it's like I'd have thought less of you if you wouldn't have helped the person. So... I'm trying to provoke us to make our light shine like the brightness of the noonday, that the nations will call us blessed, that we don't just know righteousness and judgment when somebody does us wrong, but righteousness and judgment when we can relieve the oppressed and some that are afflicted. Please consider this. This is what James would be looking for. Now, James never override the Christ, but if we can't provide that which he was looking for and he had the spirit, how much more do you think that the Most High and his son looks upon us as being those that will defraud those that are in need? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your power, your gift. And if the things that I've said causes some people to feel badly because they don't want to give. They don't want to do. Then, Father, I ask you to break stony hearts. Cause people to see you keep your word. You keep your word. Teach us wisdom to know how to judge righteously, do righteously, so that we can reflect you in the earth. Amen. Amen. And even so, amen. This... This class right now is open for discussion. If there's any to be had, it's open right now. Even if there's any disagreement with what I say, that's fine. Bring it that's up. That's a that's a good message. Um, and I um I like I like the part where you added that tax thing. That tax thing can tempt somebody because that start putting you in a what they call a lower tax bracket and then you get more money back which should be our own in the first place but that's another whole story um i think it's james and galatians when they when paul corrected um peter I'm, i think it's galatians. I getting galatians a little bit mixed up with acts and stuff but he said remember the poor oh yeah galatians too he said we always do that's and, good gary let me turn to that and it's it's really interesting, and uh, you know, we need that we need that doctrine. But the scriptures will teach us what true love is, and you know, he's he's very um, forthright with um, correcting him. Is like, um, 
you know, you don't love these people. I'm, I'm now I'm in Galatians two a little bit. Two like, you know, Peter, you you you're showing dissimulation. You 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 doing a little. You, you I'm not hypocrisizing. You've been a hypocrite. You've been a hypocrite. You know that's that's not showing true love to these people. You you confusing them, and then go on later on and say, but remember the poor. And I remember the well, maybe not the first time, but one of the first times that I read it, and it just like. Out of all of this book, mm -hmm. it's like <laughs> he's like, but don't don't forget don't forget about that. Let don't me forget. let me read it. Let me go read ahead. It. Galatians two and ten. He says, first he just said that you know they gave him the right hand of fellowship two and nine that we should go unto the heathen and they to the circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor. He said the same which I was all so far with to do. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 it's it's really amazing because when we look at the scriptures, uh, there's there's a deficiency. That I, that's not the word I want. There's a lack, there's a need for so much. And you know, we've been talking, I think, uh, several messages, both ones you've given and ones that I've given about suffering. And often there's a suffering that's necessary. And let's say the way the Lord will use suffering to help us mature, the way the Lord will use suffering to help us understand that we should depend on him. And here we are representing him and we feed. And I don't, he told, it may not be the exact same thing, but he told Peter, feed my sheep. Mm. And it's not just, it's the physical as well as the spiritual you got people coming into the body because you got all these humanitarian people doing stuff. And a lot of time they got these ulterior motives. I'm going to give you this, but there's some strings attached that you don't even know about yet. You know, but when you can love out of a pure heart and say, uh, I'm doing this for you. It's, sometimes it may not even be that you're going to even say something, but you, 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 you helping to to give a provision, which is what the Lord gave in the beginning. They had everything that they needed. And then they walked away from, I'm talking to Adam and them. let's say Adam. He's like, provide for you. So to be able to provide from a pure heart and not, so I'm going to check this off where there's someone is going to ask for tax or not to see that this, this is a, I don't, a, 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 a love that the father has given me for his creation not I'm doing this for an organization, not that I'm doing this to look good because those Pharisees would do stuff to look good and to be held or esteemed in the eyes of the people. And it made me think of that. There was another verse that I thought of, but um, I, 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 I enjoyed the, the message. It was, it was really good. Um, we, 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 we have a problem. When I say that, I'm I'm not saying necessarily us, but in the so-called body of Christ. And again, I do think of what the people refer to as the Good Samaritan. You know, we, we got to get it right in the body of Christ, and then uh, you know, we 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 do that that they can see that the Christ. Okay, this is this is. I, this is another time when I read, it was one of the first times I was reading it, the Gospels. And Jesus said, they've been in with us for like three days. <laughs> right? We need to feed these people. <laughs> but you see right there. Remember, remember we used to go visit other churches <laughs> when we were younger? How, how uh, At least our church would feed them because our mama and, and our aunt, they were cooking everything. And, and yeah. They, and we go to places, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here, they, here's a, little, here's a maybe a little Debbie, and and yeah, but Jesus, like, but um, one of the things that really stood out to me that I didn't understand fully then, and I probably still don't fully understand, it, he fed them physical food, and then, but he had given them his word, but he was like, he asked them a question, y'all ain't got no food. I think that's deeper than y'all don't have physical food, but it's like y'all y'all ain't got no food. So it's like there's something that you're supposed to be able to give. And then this he, there was some left over. Yes. You will not exhaust, like you will not exhaust the provision of the Father. He may make you wait, but we cannot exhaust the provision of the Father. 
So like, and then it's, did it say he took up twelve baskets? Yep. Twelve is so significant. I That's think government. One, I That's think one time it was twelve, and another time it was seven because he did it more than one time. One time he fed four thousand. One time he fed five thousand. Seven is perfect. It's perfect. Twelve. It's like the government. You know. It's like I I, I start I start with twelve. I, I had twelve, and it's like and it's enough. So. It, it it was it was good to do to do these things without a, a really expecting so that they can really see this 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 ain't even natural this ain't natural people like to get ops what they call ops in po politics what well, is that what they call it special what not special ops that's military talk it's optics we're going to do this cuz it look good yep so but to to go back to the part where there's the oppression, that's scary. That is so scary. People people can do these things and take advantage of people. Um, the scriptures say things gonna be brought to the light. They're gonna be brought to the light. So and, and some of some of that may be also too why they bring aliens over here. You know they want to change the voting base based on the demographics, and you can change yeah. who get to live in a certain neighborhood and. We can move other people out, but at the same time, we can we can do things and you know make it look great, you know. But rem but remember, as always, as the scriptures say, they'll lay up in their bed and they will plot. Yeah, what they want what they want to do, but we should be plotting how to do righteousness. Yeah, it, it, I, I like I I did like when you're going back to. The passages of all, or oh, they're they're all of all, I guess, as far as I'm concerned. But like that gleaning, mm -hmm. that gleaning is like leave something. Don't be selfish. <laughs> Don't be selfish. Yeah. Good Lord of mercy. Um, well, one more thing. I quit. I was in Spain one time, long time ago, and um, I saw this man whose arm his from his elbow. What would have been the lower portion of his elbow, it was actually hanging by his skin, hanging by his skin. And this man was eating something that looked like, I don't know, um, old dough out of a trash, dough is in like what you make bread with, out of a trash can. And and it just broke me. And and or I give the people when I can. And I, I, I don't remember if I gave to him. If I didn't, it's because I couldn't or they might... You, they say you have to be careful when you're in other places, but clearly this man, I'm like, I mean, his arm was hanging by skin. I never seen anything like that. And it didn't look like it hurt him. So he looked like he'd been like that a long time. Um, I'm, I'm, I, it's my, it's my custom to try to give, I, like you were saying, I'm trying to be wise in this situation, but I, I really don't remember if I did, but it just, it, it broke me. And a lot of times if we're not even able to do, we need to definitely to pray for people because some it's that intention just like you can have an intention to be ill to people or hide a malevolent wicked intention the lord knows intention when you really want to do something and you can't he 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 deeper than we, we are he's so deep so deeper than we are i'm through i'm gonna let somebody else say something that they yes yeah, if anybody if anybody else would like to speak on this message. I'm pull, I pulled up Leviticus 19 and 10 since Gary mentioned what I said. It says, Yahweh says, and thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shall you gather every grape of your vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am the Lord. And what, that mean, what that means is, uh, guess what? I ain't got to give you no other reason. Look at what he says in verse 9, Leviticus 19 and 9. It says, and when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, reap the corners. That corners means the edge, the borders, not all the way to the end. You shall not reap the corners of that field, neither shall you gather the gleaning of your harvest. And you shall not glean your vineyard. Then he tell you to leave it for the poor. I am the Lord. Then he said, "You shall not steal." What did, did did you catch? Did you catch the connection? If you do it, you're stealing. You're stealing from me. 
but you're stealing from me because I've dedicated it. This is mine. And I'm telling you, this is for them. So you don't have the kind of welfare where you sit around and you get a check. You don't sit. Around. Now, those that can't work, that's one thing. But those that can't, let them have some dignity that they can get out there and work and earn yeah. what they need. Yeah. So, so that's one way you leave it where they can do it. Provide them the opportunity to work. Another one where you actually give. But um, anyone else? There was a man who had a big barn, a lot of yes. land. And he was feeling good about himself. Yes. And they seemed to have a tight fist, not, not to hit people, but it's like it didn't seem to open. And he said, I'm going to do some stuff. You know, James said, you say, if the Lord's will, it don't look like he included the Lord in anything. You know, it's interesting. Uh, James 4 says, you ask, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. Well, people will name it and claim it. Now, they don't have to ask the Lord because the Lord better do what they say. It. That's not what James said. And it don't look like this guy who said, I'm going to build myself some bigger barns. I'm going to have a better profit, you know, and I'm I'm just going to do. I am going to do. I am what Luke I am. 12 and 15. And the Lord. Is in, <laughs> is in, look, yeah. One man in the company said, Master, speak to my brother. <laughs> <laughs> that he divide the inheritance with me. And he says, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, take heed, beware of covetousness, beware of greed. It says, for a man's life consists not of the abundance in the things which he has or which he possesses. And he spake a parable to them, saying, the ground of a certain man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room to bestow my fruits. All the poor in the world. But he says, and he said, this I will do. I will pull down my barns. I will build greater. And there, I, there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods to myself. 19. And I will say to my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou have provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, like for the last days, and is not rich toward God. Gary, this was one of the first messages I preached probably maybe 30 years ago. Because I looked at that man's life consists not of the abundance of the things that he had. And I went over here to John at this time, John 10. I think it was 10. It might be, let's say, let's say 10 and 10. Uh, he says, um, the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, based on what he said when he talked about the man in that parable, it's not consistent of the things that he have. It's not consistent of his riches. It's consistent of having him yeah. as their good shepherd. Anyway, we can contrast mm -hmm. this rich man with who you mentioned, Boaz. Mm -hmm. They both had, but the the inclination of the heart first to to be the fathers, and then to have a concern for others. They're both wealthy, and I do believe that the parables often Christ is talking about his own people. Mm -hmm. He might mention the Samaritan. So I think largely he's telling them, he's like, this is a picture of who, who we are as this Judean society. And you see this selfishness here and I'm um, building up this and I'm saving. And he's like, um, yeah, you're wealthy. But uh, as we was talking about Ecclesiastes, that you don't know who you're going to leave it to. You don't know what's going to happen. It's like all that you did, and 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 you're not even gonna get to enjoy it. You're not gonna get to enjoy it. So Boaz, he like, listen, there's some people coming up in here and they're gonna be hungry. They can get this. 
this man, like, I, I, I'm like, why don't you just build on another piece of land that you probably have and give this if you can do it? I'm not saying be crazy, but just it is is his his heart and um, having a love for 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 the less fortunate. Uh, is there's a, there's a big contrast there. You know, I just thought some people won't know who Boaz is or where to find Boaz. It's in the book of Ruth, chapter two. Did, can I may I read three verses to give you a taste of who kind of kind of person Boaz was? Well, you already know, but for others that don't, Naomi had gone to a to a country to get away from famine. Her her husband and her sons. Her husband died. And the two sons died. So she and the two widows were left. One widow stayed in Moab and one came back with her because she said, no matter what I see physically, I see what kind of person you are and I want your God and I want your people. So it says that Naomi had a kinsman, her husband, her husband, okay? A mighty man of wealth. Next time somebody say, you say you don't believe in wealth. Listen to this kind of wealth of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess, which was a foreign woman, said unto Naomi, let me go now to the field and glean ears of the corn after him in whose sight I should find grace. And she said unto her, go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And in her hap, in her, what she has, that was to light upon the part of a field belonging to Boaz which was of the kindred of Elimelech. So she just happened to do that and said, Boaz came from Bethlehem, the house of bread, and said unto the reapers, Shalom, or the Lord be with you. And they answered, the Lord bless thee. And Boaz said to his, Boaz said his servant that was set over the reapers, whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reaper's hand said, she said, that's the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the company, country of Moab. And she said, I pray you let me glean. That's that border where people could go and work. It belonged to Yah. But if he gathered everything for himself, then it wouldn't be nothing for the poor. Here's a rich man that left it. Now watch this part. And he said, I pray you let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. God even said, if some fell on the ground, don't pick it up, leave it for them. And he says, so she came and has continued from morning until now a worker. And she tarried a little in the house. Then Boaz said unto Ruth, here is thou not, my daughter. Go not and glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by the maiden. Look at this. Stay safe and don't go to somebody going to treat you wrong. I don't care about you taking from mine. It ain't mine. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap and they go after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art thirst, go into the vessel and drink of that which the young men have drawn. And she fell on her face and bowed to the ground and said, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou should have taken knowledge of me, seeing that I'm a stranger? Look at what we keep from ourselves. Here is a man without here is a man without the New Testament, and he, here's a man without the book of Kings, without the book of Samuel, because he comes before Samuel and, and the and the Psalms, and look at how he's living. And he was wealthy. There is a real connect that you mentioned mm -hmm. that um I I think sometimes we are, I mean, let's say me, because sometimes I'm just pointing the scriptures and I'm like, you just like, think about it some more. Just think about it some more. Mm -hmm. You say you, the least of these you've done to me. And, and a lot of these people, we don't think, we don't think of the Christ, well, think of the Christ or the Messiah. You say you did it to me. That might be mixing Acts 9, but I think 7, Matthew says something like that. I think you referred to that. And it's like, there is potential, potential winning a soul for the father and and not everybody and sometimes doing things like this it's, it's sort of like that's that sowing of a seed I, I, i'm not talking about just being humanitarian people can do stuff and say oh i did this I, no, no, no i'm not even referring to that but 
the 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 most high son says like that's like doing it to me. So I think and 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 understanding that um I just I just there's just a lot there and then I I probably can't even articulate it very well, but um Ecclesiastes says a time for this and a time for that. There is the time to give that that um food. This is let me I won't let me not go off on a tangent. But I and then there's the time definitely sometimes it's simultaneous that you 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 give the word to. Um, you see the scriptures will show that the father would be like, okay. Let me see if I get my thoughts together because I don't want to lose. Peter says, seven go have I none. Jesus feed up people on the Sabbath day. And people, the Pharisees get mad. What are you doing on the Sabbath day? He said, you, for you don't even love? You, you go get your ox out, you go get your ox out of the ditch. And you upset because I'm feeding somebody on the Sabbath day. There's a, there's a greater principle. Besides, I'm greater, I'm greater than the Sabbath. And then he connect that. He'd be like, um, uh, like. He'll go and pull in what true the true bread is, right? <laughs> what the true food is. It's just he he weaves these things together. So that if we can really understand, he he's showing he's showing he's showing love. Anyway, I, just different different passages are coming to me, but I, I I've spoken I think a lot. So and that was that was good stuff. And nineteen and thirteen and. In Leviticus, it says, you shall not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Proverbs 20 and 10. I don't want that right now. Proverbs 22 and 22. Rob not the poor because he's poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate. I submit to you. We have learned the ways of our government. We have learned the ways of those that no matter what, I'm going to be wealthy. We have learned the ways of greed to not love our neighbor. And so it puts us in the position that, look at this one, Deuteronomy 24 and 14, you will not oppress a hired servant. That's what James is talking about. That is poor and needy. Whether he be of your brethren or the strangers in the land within your gates. Verse 15, Deuteronomy 24. At that day you shall give him his hire, neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor, and setteth his heart upon it, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. Think about this. When you got people in your own assembly that's hiring people and doing this, let alone companies that say, we're going to file bankruptcy, y'all, none of y'all going to get paid. <laughs> yep. Or they say, well, was, you know, the CEO stole the money. And we'll start up another business a few months later. Yes. Anyone else? The lovely Andrina, she's still there. Because her she kept going out and coming in for some reason. I saw it. Well, I think everybody, Gary, if you have this, you got something else. I, I mean, if you do, I'm listening. I did, I did things. I just scriptures, just passages coming. Um, great, great. Abigail's husband almost lost his life because he didn't want to be That's right. people. He, he keep back David's wages. <laughs> David said, I'll kill everyone that pisses. <laughs> It, the Bible said, "Oh, no man, anything but to love them." And it's just like there. That's automatically that. I mean, love ain't just like I'm gonna tell you what you want to hear. It's there's a necessity and a need for that which is, I'm gonna say, righteous. That's a that's sometimes correcting people. That's sometimes feeding people. That but uh, to all, oh, if we if we can't feed, then Lord help them. Mama told me something years ago. And I still do it most of the time now. She said, Gary, if you hear a siren, I said, Lord, I say, Lord, you know what you do. I learned to think, Lord, you know what you're doing. And so sometimes this might be you um, giving somebody their reward, but I'm like, help help, help that person, your will be, I'll say like, your will be done. She said, 
and she told me that I don't know if I was like I was little and I when I hear it's not not every time but still probably about a good 95 percent of the time I think about that and that well, Lord your will be done if you would help help them you know it, that that's maybe not exactly the same but it just it's just that thought uh, what you were talking about about David he said that David had kept that man's flock and did all that work and they were they were in the day of slaughter wasn't going to give up anything and David said surely in vain have I kept this fellow in the wilderness and nothing was missed of him that pertained unto him and he has requited me evil for good so and more also God do unto me unto the enemies of David if I leave of all of them any that pertain unto him by the morning light any that pisses against the wall. I guess me have been doing it a long time against the wall. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off her ass and fell before David and bowed herself to the ground. And we know what she did. She begged him not to avenge himself and she brought, I didn't know that he had done this. I didn't know this. One of my servants came and told me that this man, this, this Nabal, the son of Belial, what he did. But I brought you cakes. I brought y'all food. I brought enough to feed you all. She said, but don't do this. You're going to be the, the, you the Lord's servant. Don't let it be a blight. And he listened. And she said, he saved, he saved their, not, their life. Listen to it. Second, First Samuel 25. Let not my Lord, I pray thee regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, that's her husband. For as his name is, Nabal in his name is folly is with him. But I thine handmaid, so not the young man of my Lord whom you sent. And so he would kept him from killing. And she said, forgive the trespass of your handmaid. I would certainly, he said, God going to make you a house. And then he talks about how Saul had done stuff and she fed. And David said to Abigail, listen to what he said to this wise woman who, who when we, women want to be like so many people. But it says, and David said to Abigail, blessed be Yahweh. Blessed be Yahweh Elohim of Israel, which have sent this, you this day to meet me. And blessed be thy advice. And blessed be thou which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood, even from avenging myself with mine own hand. For in very deed, as Yahweh Elohim of Israel liveth, which have kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hasted to come and meet me. Had not not been any left of Nabal by morning light, any that pisseth against the wall. That means we weren't you you weren't even in danger. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's some women down there to make themselves where they do it on the wall, but that was a man thing. Nobody else? Well, I thank everybody for joining us. May the Most High God, who is blessed forever, amen, bless us. Keep us. Make his glorious, righteous face shine upon us. Be gracious to us. And give us shalom. Amen, amen, and amen. Good night, everybody. I really appreciate this. This is one of those kind of messages that say, uh, we got, we got, we, there's still room for growth. Good night, everybody. Good night. Love y'all. We love you too.